Now, a couple of weeks ago, I released a video on the alpha version of ACF Pro 6.1 and the new features that it brought with it, specifically custom post types and taxonomies. Today, we're going to go back and take a look at the full and final release. But the better news is this isn't just for ACF Pro. It's also available in the free version of ACF. So everything I'll show you today is going to be available whichever version you choose to install. So for our example today, I'm going to show you quickly what I've got set up and then I'll show you what's going on in the back end of actual ACF. So this is a site that I'm working on for a demonstration tutorial. It includes custom taxonomies, for example, the locations and the types of accommodation themselves. We've got a custom post type, which is the accommodation. Inside there, we've got some standard normal fields like the featured image, the title and the description. We also have a range of custom meta fields applied to those individual properties. So this is basically a good example of some of the things you can do using ACF and now the ability to create our own custom taxonomies and our own custom post types. Let's hop over into the dashboard and take a look at how this all works. So coming into the dashboard, we have the ACF section, which you will notice now no longer says custom fields. It's now ACF, which does make a lot more sense. So at the across the top, you'll see field groups, which is what we've kind of always had where we can create our custom meta fields. We have post types and taxonomies included now, so we can easily create our own custom post types and custom taxonomies. So hopping into post types, you can see we've got a nice simple overview of what's going on. The name of the actual post type itself, any description you might have applied to it and also things like the taxonomies associated with it the actual field groups associated with it and the number of posts that are actually using this specific post type coming into the post type itself inside here you can see you've got all the standard things you'd used to if you want to keep this really really simple you can go ahead just include the labels that you want to use whether it's public hierarchical and you could literally leave it at that if you want to if you want to use the advanced configuration which is by default turned off this will open up the advanced settings and for the most part, they're not really that advanced. They're kind of the settings you would have had using something like CPT UI, but kind of grouping things together does ultimately make this feel a little less overpowering, a little less daunting. So if you're a new user and you really don't want to delve into this, you can simply go with the basics and just turn off the advanced configuration. Or if you want to come in and delve in, you can do that inside here. So you can link your taxonomies, you can choose what this supports. So any of the normal default WordPress features, you can see I've only got the title, editor and featured image on. But if you wanted to use author and excerpts and so on, you could do that. You can include a description and you can choose whether this is active or not. And then you simply go through and tab through these. So the labels, if you want to update these, you can do or you can just leave them as they are. You can also go ahead, clear them and regenerate them from here. So it's a very quick way of just testing things out. If you don't like it, reset it back. Your visibility option, you can choose whether you show this in the UI, whether it's shown in the admin menu, the menu position, the kind of image you want to use for the menu icon, any custom callbacks. So some of these features are on the advanced side, but again, you can choose to ignore anything you don't want to or don't understand. If you want to exclude from the search, all those things, you can choose to customize your URL. You can set this whether it's in the feed, whether it's have an archive and so on. And you can choose any permissions you want. And also, if you want to tag this into the REST API, you can do that. So you can go ahead, save your changes. And once you've done that, then you've got this little pop-up, which allows you to add fields to the accommodation, link existing field groups, or create a new taxonomy. So a nice, quick, and simple way of doing some common tasks. If you hop back to the post types, for example, you can see there's our description added in. And any changes we make will be listed inside there. And the same kind of thing goes for taxonomies. If you come into your taxonomies and you open this up, you can see pretty much all the same kind of options inside you. You can link it to the post type or post types you want. You can set up again with this hierarchical. You've got your advanced settings. So all those are available to you, whether it's a post type or a taxonomy and the relevant settings are inside there. And you can keep it as simple or as advanced as you want to. So there's nothing really that dissimilar to what we saw at the beginning. However, there's a couple of nice quality of life features that I really do quite like. First of all, like I say, the overall layout and the streamlining and the more sort of up-to-date look and feel you have with this does actually make working with it a lot nicer. But if you come into something like any of these field groups or post types and so on and come in and take a look, you see all the normal things we expect to see inside you. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot simpler, it's a lot nicer to work with. And there's some other things inside you. So for example, if we go to add a field in, you can see everything looks like it pretty much has done in that alpha version and not too dissimilar to before. You can go in and set up what you want. And again, you've got the tabbed variation on here to control exactly what you want. But what you also have now is this nice little quality of life browse fields option. 
you can open this up and then this groups things together by the type of field. So your basic fields, your content style fields, choices, advanced, or pro only fields are all listed inside you. So let's say you wanted to include something like a content, you want to use the WYSIWYG editor, we can then go ahead, it'll give us information about what this actually does. We can jump straight over to the documentation to find out how to use it. So no sort of digging around searching for yourself. And you can also go ahead and you can add in the field label. So we might want to say contact info, for example, and then we can just say select field and there's our field added in and any of the relevant information is added in for us. And then we can come in and quickly customize this. But you can see it's pulled the name in for us the type of field, the field labels, the field name, and then we just add in what we want. So this is a nice visual, quick and easy way of being able to browse these fields and see exactly what's going on. And anything that's like more complicated, for example, you've got relationships. Again, you can just simply jump over to the documentation and find out how to use it. So not a big deal change, but if you use, you're new to using something like ACF or ACF Pro, and you just want that refresher of documentation and so on, this is nice to see that it's all just literally at the click of a button directly inside this interface. So that's pretty cool to see. And that's basically what we have with the update. There's a lot of other things going on underneath the hood that we don't really need to know too much about. But I think from a usability point of view, this now has made it a little bit nicer, a little bit easier. I like the look and design of it. I like the fact we can still come into the tool section and we can easily go in there and choose to export things that we want. I've used this several times myself and it's so much quicker and easier just to download the JSON file or generate the PHP and then just use that on the site that you want. So in summary, I think the changes that have been made in this 6.1 update are probably the nicest and the biggest updates we've seen in a very long time to ACF. So it's good to see that there's actually still life in this. It's being pushed forward. And now by having post types and taxonomies integrated into ACF and ACF Pro, just means we have one less plugin reliance that we have to kind of maintain and update. So nice to have all that. And those little quality of life updates that have been added into the interface that just make working with it a little bit smoother, a little bit nicer, especially if you're a new user, just speeds up the process and makes it a little less overwhelming and daunting. Now, over the coming weeks, I will be releasing videos on using ACF and ACF Pro in a range of different projects. So if you'd like to be notified about that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll let you know as soon as new content actually comes out. But as always, all applicable links are in the description and I'd love to get your feedback on what you think of these updates in ACF and ACF Pro are. Drop a comment in the comment section below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care. Thank you.